How's it going everybody? My name is John Bianchi. I'm the Airbnb data guy. And in this video, I'm going to teach you how to maximize the revenue out of the Airbnb that you get. When you invest that money into that property, we want to make sure you're getting the right property in the right market, but we want to figure out how to actually stretch those dollars as far as we possibly can. And I have a process that I use with the Airbnb data that's going to allow you to be able to figure that out. So let's not waste any time. Let's get right into it. Um, first off, once again, we're going to be figuring out this five step process. The very first thing I want to explain here is I use the Burger King logic. So Burger King spends millions of dollars to figure out what corner to be on and, or sorry, McDonald's spends millions of dollars to figure out what corner to be on and Burger King opens up across the street with the exact same product. And essentially that's exactly what we're going to be doing. We're going to be paying attention to what the other people are doing, um, with their Airbnbs that is working out really well. That's allowing them to make way more money than everybody else. And then we're just going to replicate that into our process it may seem super simple, but I promise you that it works. And a little bit of proof of success of this is that there are two homes and you can, you can take a look here. So this is the very first home. It's a beautiful looking home. I've talked about this home before. Um, it's done really, really well. It's got murals, hanging lights, edited photos, pool. It's got a nice interior, even murals on the inside of the home as well. Uh, the couch, obviously everything looks really, really good. It's a well put together listing. And this listing is currently making about $123,000, right? Now this listing right here is also in the exact same area. It's also a four bedroom. One thing I didn't point out. So four bedroom, three bath. If I scroll down here, you can see that this is located where the park is on this side and you have a golf course on this side and this home over here, which is uh, the same, you know, four bedrooms as well. And then it's also located with the park on this side and the golf course on this side. So they're very, very close to each other. Um, as you can see, and they're both four bedrooms, but this home here is making $80,000 more than the other one, which is incredible because if you look at this, it's done extraordinarily well. They, they know exactly who the customer archetype is. They figured out exactly how to design it extremely well, and they're able to pull $80,000 more out of this property by being more strategic with the way that they did this. And so that simple logic is kind of what I wanna be able to explain to you. And just so you can see here, there's the pink cactus, 202 compared to this one right here, which is 123. So. That's a little bit of proof that this actually does work, right? And what we're going to into now is the five steps. So step one is going to be using a profit map to identify the highest average revenue. Um, and for this entire example and for this entire video, I'm going to be focusing in on rental arbitrage, which I typically don't do, but I'm going to focus on, on rental arbitrage. And we're going to be looking at the one bedroom sections of cities. Okay. So we're going to use a profit map to be able to do that. That's going to be the example we're going to go with for this. And then we're also going to organize that by profitability. Super easy step. We're going to remove bad data. So this is something I talk about in almost all of my videos. So it might, might sound a little repetitive, but it's really important. And then what we're also going to do is we're going to review the top performing listings in depth. We're make, going to make a ton, a ton of notes. And this is going to be a really tedious process, uh, but you've got to really figure out every single last little difference between properties so that you know exactly why one property is doing better than the other. And notes is all about, uh, is the best way to do that. So then the last thing is actually we're going to use a lot of logic to reason out to why one property might be doing better than the other and what that revenue driver might be. Okay. And the, the, the logic you have to use is it takes a lot of brain power. Sometimes it's very super obvious. Sometimes you really have to go through the nitty gritty details um, and to get to that, to that answer. So let's get into it guys. Um, the very first step is going to be identifying highest average revenue. So what we're gonna be using is a profit map to go through it and try to figure out where is the absolute, absolute best place to uh, deep di dive deeper into the data. And so for this, I'm gonna be using a Chicago profit map. A profit map is a product that I offer. Uh, if you look down below, you can find a link to the website, which will allow you to go through the process of actually purchasing one of these. But uh, let me explain to you exactly what they are. And if you find it interesting, go down below and click the link. So on the left-hand side, what we have uh, are all the zip codes. And once again, we're in Chicago, Illinois. So we have all the zip codes for Chicago, Illinois. And then up top, what we have are all the different unit sizes. So you have a, a studio, one bedroom, two bedroom, three bedroom, so on and so forth. Where those two connect is the average annual revenue for an Airbnb in Chicago. So a studio within this zip code makes about $40,000 a year on average. The number directly behind it is just simply saying how many Airbnb listings that's based off of, right? So eight, eight, uh, you know, studios within the zip code are on average are producing about $40,000 a year. Now, the way that we use this for this very first step is we're just simply looking for the highest uh, zip code, the, the zip code that's making the most amount of money, right? So like I said, we're going to focus in on the one bedrooms here. And as you can see, as I go down this, the very first one is making about 38,000, but the next zip code is making 49,000. So right off the bat, it's like, why would you ever pay attention to the first one when the next zip code is making clearly more money? And then as you continue to go down, you realize that this one uh, zip code's pretty good as well. This one's great as well. And then it dips off again in this, in this specific zip code. So right away, you know that you would never look in that area, right? So this is a, a quick way to be able to figure out exactly where we're going to be going. Now, if I were to just highlight all this and zoom all the way through, 
What you'll notice is that there's a couple outliers. So there's this one location right here that makes about 64,000, which is amazing. That's tons of money uh, for one bedroom to be making on average, which means some people are actually doing better. And then you also have this other area where there's uh, people making 87,000 on average, which is very impressive. However, it's over less listing, so it's not as uh, intriguing. For this example, what I found the most interesting was actually this one right here, which is 49,000 because there's 34 listings. And so because there's 34 listings, that means that there's half the people are doing worse than 49 and half people are doing better. So it told me that there's going to be a lot of data of people doing over 50,000 for one bedroom within this specific area. And that intrigued me a lot. I knew that there would be a lot of potential to uh, learn from these specific properties. And so what you would do here is you just simply click it and you go show details. And when that happens, what, what's going to happen is it's going to pop open all of the listings that show up that are one bedrooms within that specific location and now we have all of their data okay and we can see every single last little nitty-gritty piece of data about these listings now the next thing that we want to do is step two we want to organize by profitability this is without a doubt the easiest step that you're going to do because all you got to do is come over here click this and go organize from z to a and when you do that you now have every single last one of these in order of who's making the most of who's making the least the reason this is important to do is because this is how you're able to start seeing patterns right so as you can see we have a huge grouping of people doing 60 we have a huge grouping of people doing 50 and then we have a bunch of people doing 40 and all of these listings are going to be a little bit better as they make a little bit more and you want to be able to determine what is the difference between these and when it comes to a one bedroom there's not a ton of differences between a, a, a one a one bedroom and another one bedroom right because there's not a lot of real estate to work with there's no you can't add a game room you can't add a movie theater room you can't add like a usually they're in apartments especially in chicago right so there's not a huge differentiating factor however for some reason we have some people making forty thousand, some people making sixty thousand, and not just one and two people we've got like 10 in each of those categories which means that they're clearly doing something different and if you're investing into a one bedroom within chicago you want to know that difference because that extra twenty thousand dollars you can make will naturally be all profit right and so that's why we organize by profitability for that step. Now, the next step that we're going to get into is we're going to remove the bad data. Now, I can't stress this enough. This is hands down one of the most important uh, pro parts of this entire thing, because if you screw this up, you will go out and sign a lease or you'll buy a home and it's going to uh, you're going to end up losing a, a crazy amount of money because uh, if you use bad data and, and it, it's likely telling you that you're going to make more than you actually would. And then you sign the lease expecting to make way more money and you end up making way less. And that's going to really suck. I almost signed two $7,000 a month leases off of bad data for in, in Ann Arbor, Michigan. And then uh, I realized I had bad data. Thank God I did because I was able to avoid signing both of those leases and losing a ton of money. So I hope that story scares you a little bit and you pay attention to the, removing the bad data. Now, I talk about this all the time, almost every single video I go over it. And one thing I want to mention right now is that AirDNA is the best resource and tool to use to be able to get this information, to be able to uh, see all of your macro information when it comes to looking into all these different markets. There is a lot of data in there that I call bad. It's just not useful. Okay. And I'm going to explain why it's not useful in a minute, but I'm not trying to say that you shouldn't use AirDNA. And that's something that a lot of people have told me is that they stopped using AirDNA because of me, but I use AirDNA every single day. Okay. I, every single day I'm using it. So it's still useful. Um, it's a tool that you use with, along with the profit maps, but uh, I just want to make that point while I'm getting through this video. So first off, let's hop back to the data. Okay. First off, what is good data? Okay. Um, good data is two things. We need first, we need somebody who's a full-time host. So we need an actual Airbnb or who's trading, treating their Airbnb listing as a business and they're operating it full-time as a business. And then the next thing we need is that AirDNA has actually been tracking their data for over 250 days. If they've been tracking it for over 250 days, then um, it's almost a full year. And then we can almost figure out exactly how much you can make by the rest of the year, right? You, if they're only being tracked for 30 days, let's say, and this little number right here, it says days available. It should say days tracked. If that was only 30, you can't just take that number and times it by 12, because if it was peak season that those last 30 days, well, then you're going to be getting a number that's going to be way inflated because it doesn't show the highs and the lows. Whereas if we get it over 250 days, ideally 365, we're going to know how much that property made during the highs and the lows throughout that entire year. And we have a true annual revenue number. Okay. So those are the two main things that we need. And then when you're going through the data, what you would do, right? So you go in here and you're starting to review each one of these listings as you go through it. And the thing that you're going to be looking for is you want to ensure that's an entire home. Now, when you get the profit map, it's already going to have just the entire home. You want it to be over 250 days. Once again, when you get the profit map, it's already going to be over 250 days. And you want there to be less than 20 reviews. You guessed it. There's all, anyone who has less than 20 reviews is already removed. Now, the last little thing that you want to do here is you want to make sure that there's a review 
every single month for the past 12 months, okay? And so what you have to do is you look at this piece of data, you click the link, it's gonna open it up, you take a look at it, you click into the, the reviews and you go through and you ensure that there's been an actual review every single month for the past 12 months. And you do this for every single last one of these listings and as you're doing it, you're just simply writing yes or no as you go through, right? And you just repeat this over and over and over again. It's gonna be tedious, it's gonna be boring, but you're gonna be cleaning the data. So the, with the profit map, about 90% of the data uh, the bad data is removed. You just have to get rid of that last little 10% to ensure that you are actually looking at full-time hosts that have been tracked for over 250 days, right? That's where we're going to get that good data. So once we finish that up, the next thing we're going to do is going to be taking those notes, okay? Step four, review top performing listings in depth. Look for every single last little detail. And I got a list here of every single last little detail you want to look for, okay? So when you're going through it, what is the quality of the home? Is it a luxury home? Does it have a lot of character to it? Is it like an old historian home? Is it just a simply poor made home? Is it a cheap looking home, but it's it's not poor? Is it is it 100 years old? Like what is the quality of the home that you're looking at? And usually you can look at that through the floors, the kitchen and the bathroom, right? Um, is there a pool? If, if so, what is the style of the pool? If you're looking at a one bedroom, is there a pool that's up on the rooftop patio that overlooks the city? Or do they just have a pool that's on the ground and, and maybe it's surrounded by buildings, but it doesn't have the views from it, right? What is the pool style? What if you're, if you actually have a, a four bedroom home, is it a square pool? Is it a round pool? Is it an insert pool? All these are going to make a little bit difference on what people will value your home as, right? Square pool do more better than other places. Is there a hot tub or is there space for a hot tub? You're just simply keeping track of this because if everyone has a hot tub, you're going to need a hot tub as well. And you want to make sure you have space for it. And this is not going to apply to one bedrooms, but you get the idea. Square footage. How big is the space? Is it really, and is it, uh, you know, 2,000 square feet, 3,000 square feet? Like, what are, we, what are we working with here? When it comes to one bedrooms, once again, you're, you can generally tell, the, tell this by uh, the bedrooms, right? Like, when you take a photo of the bedroom, does it look like the bedroom is just kind of crammed in there? When you're looking at the, the living room, is the living room, like the TV's right in front of the living room, like or the, the, the TV right in front of the couch? If that's the case, you know you're working with a small location and that's going to hurt the revenue in comparison to these ones that might be a little bit larger, right? The Airbnb listing quality. How nice is the Airbnb? How well is it actually been put together? How good are the photos? How good is the design? How good is the, um, the, the, the pricing that they have going on? How good is the title that they have? How good is the description? All of these little things. Is it a good listing or is it a, a, somebody went through with their iPhone in the middle of the night and took photos of it, which some people do, and it looks terrible, right? If that's the case, then you have to kind of mark that as you're going through it. What are the key features and amenities that are allowing it to uh, stand out uh, in comparison to everybody else? And this is really, these are the true little revenue drivers. All these little things I just mentioned, they're important and they do make a difference. Sometimes when you get to this little key feature section, that's where it's going to be like, it'll, it'll explode the revenue, right? Um, so it does have a rooftop patio. Does it have a backyard? How big is the backyard? Um, how nice are the views from that rooftop patio? Does it have any sort of views whatsoever? Does it have a deck? Does it have, what size is the deck? What is like... All of these little things are going to matter when it comes time to determining or to being able to figure out why one's doing better than the other, which is what this whole video is all about, right? The interior design, did they give it a design or did they just throw furniture in there? The quality of the kitchen, the bathroom, I sort of already mentioned this already, but is it a brand new, is it a new build? Is it old? Is it brown? Is it white? What is it, right? Is there a game room? If so, how big is it? What games do they have in there? How many games do they have in there? Extra entertainment in the backyard. What kind of features and amenities in the backyard have they added into that backyard? The quality of the furniture, kind of already touched on that a little bit. Actually, I didn't touch on the quality. If it's, it, does it look like it's really cheap furniture that you just wouldn't want to sit in? Or is it the luxury? Have they gone with an entire luxury package for the entire home? Because that's going to make a difference. And you may not be able to do that in your home. So you have to kind of account for that and assume that you're not going to be able to you know, put in as high quality furniture. And that's going to lower the uh, yourself in comparison to that person. So you have to assume that you're going to make a little bit less. But you're going to find some other revenue drivers that may help you get a little bit further up there, right? And then what's your, uh, what's the location? You should be able to figure that one out. So many, so many different little things that we just went through that you have to pay attention to and you have to keep an eye on because one of these little things is going to show up over and over and over again in the sort of top par portion of these listings. And when that shows up, you're going to, you're going to start to notice it. And when you start to notice it, you're going to be like, oh, there's the differentiator, right? There's that little thing that's allowing for it to actually make more money than everybody else. And so I can't stress that enough when you're going through that, you need to look for that specific thing and you need to make all the note, those notes. I do this every single day and I still can sometimes miss stuff and I come back to it and I realize like, oh, I didn't realize that that living room was actually twice the size of the living room that I heard, I have and therefore I'm not gonna be able to compete with their living room because it's way bigger and has a better ceiling, right? So like all of these things are gonna be factors and if you're not accounting for them, you're going to miss these things and you're not gonna be able to figure out how to maximize your revenue. So it may be a tedious process, but you have to do it, okay? Now, step five is logically reason 
what's driving your revenue, all right? Now, I'm going to kind of hop over here and I'm gonna to prove to you that this is, this is what I do. So here is the data, you can see 60657, and it says one right there, which means one bedrooms, which is the same thing that I'd opened up over here. And I had actually gone through this, cleaned up all the data. You can see I put yes, no, actually there's no no's because I've hidden all of them already in the filter. So I'm not looking at any of them because it's, I don't need to. Um, and I'm just looking at, you know, you know some, this one I think is most likely true, but everything else I believe is fully true, right? And I made notes on every single last little thing. Now I make a little bit less notes because I've been doing this longer than you guys have. Um, and so I can kind of see things, but you've got to make the notes as best you possibly can. Don't uh, do as I say, don't do as I do. <laughs> so um, anyways, so I went through all this, I made notes on all these different little things. And as I was going through, I kind of want to show you a couple of these listings. So this is the top performer. This is the host. This is, it's really well put together. It's a good space. There's plenty of space in this living room. I can see it's a brand new kitchen. Um, and one thing I noticed is it's got this industrial sort of pipe that's going all the way through it, which gives it a little bit of, of, of a feel to it. It's got an accent well wall. Um, so all these things are really great. So it's good size. It's got some industrial feel to it. It's got a, um, a, a good design to it. It's got good photos, all of these things, right? And if I go to the next one, it's the exact same thing. It's in the exact same building. It's got the exact same industrial feel to it. And then you go, keep going on from there. You start looking here like, okay, this is really nice, uh, well put together. This is good um, uh, kitchen. Like, honestly, this couch doesn't look super comfortable, but, you know, it still is well put together. It's good photos. There's clearly good light in here. Um, then you get to the, ne the next one. It's not nearly as nice, right? It's dimmer photos. Um, it's a good size still. They've got a little area here. There is some style to it, but it's just not that same level of what we've been seeing. Anyways, I went through all of this, guys. I went through all these different little ones. And what I ended up realizing was that what I believe to be that sort of key differentiator or sort of stacking the key differentiators was all of these little features of it being brand new and industrial and the size. So those three things, good square footage. So it felt like there's a good amount of space. Um, it has an industrial feel to it and it's got a new kitchen. All three of these things I can't control. When I, I can only control it when I actually get the listing, right? As soon as I get the listing, um, those I'd be looking for those things. But when it comes to like the accent wall and the design of the home and the photos, I can apply a good design to any location. So what I'm trying to say right now is I'm trying to look at the things that I can't change, such as the industrial feel of a home. I can't change that. Therefore, I've got to find it when I actually go out and look for a listing. So that was one of the, the, the I used my logic of going through all these listings to try and figure out what was the difference. And those were the three things that I found to be the most uh, differentiator, which once again is going to be the, the size of the listing. It's a good size one bedroom. Uh, the 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 uh, industrial feel to it, and then the brand new kitchen. So all those things wrapped up as to this is what is making the most sense. Then on the next thing I did, okay, I took all those listings and then I put them into this map. So if you actually do Google My Maps, you can take all the Latin long that are in the uh, in the profit map. You can take the Latin long, you can plug it into a spreadsheet, and what you're going to end up finding out not a spreadsheet but a map. What you end up finding out is that the vast majority of the listings are all located to the right of this little railroad railroad here, right? And so they're all to the right of that and you're closer to the water. Whereas all of the listings were in this general area, but the vast majority of the ones that are doing best are right over here. So that says something, right? That's like, hey, probably look over here. And this is just like a little bonus step that you should be doing so that you have a general idea of where to go. But uh, anyways, so that's a step six, let's call it, right? You plug it in there. So once you've done all of this and you've figured out where what the, the revenue drivers are, what the differentiators are, what the things that you should be focusing on are, you go hunting. You go and look for the properties that match that specifically. This is the best thing in the world. You have a clear understanding of like where you're going to be going within the city. So you've, you know, you've looked through the profit, profit map. You know that the zip code that you're in is one of the most profitable zip codes to be in. So that's a huge bonus on step one. And now you've gone through this entire process and you know what all those key revenue drivers are. So now it's just a matter of finding that listing and putting it together in a way that's going to allow you to be in that top 10%. And when we talk about being in this oversaturated markets or the recession coming, the people that are still going to get booked are going to be the ones that are in that top 10% that have created a listing that's so much better than everybody else's that they're just going to get booked over everyone else. Okay. And so this is how you do it. You figure out what your competition, competition is doing to be in that top 10% and you replicate it. Burger King logic, it works. Trust me, I've been doing it for like five years now. So um, to add to this, I've also added a, an example, okay? So like I said, we want industrial feel, we want new build, good size, right location. Um, I could you know, pay up to about $2,800 in rent. Uh, then I would design it well, I'd take good photos, and luck, you know, this place would have lots of light. And so this is the actual example. Let me kind of bring this over here, get this set up. 
So this is an actual example of a listing. And as you can see, it's got the industrial feel to it. That was like my number one thing. Like if I can get that industrial feel, if I can find that, then I know I'll be able to actually uh, uh, outperform everybody else because no, you know, the top performers have it. But what if I can do better than the top performers, right? So like that's, that was kind of the way I was looking at it. So this listing is bigger than theirs. It's got more industrial feel and uh, it's got a newer kitchen. So as you can see here, it's got a, a newer kitchen, a new kitchen as well. So they have a new kitchen, I have a new kitchen. I have this, a bigger place in them and I have more industrial and I'm going to put it together really well. And with that extra little space, I'm probably going to throw in like a foosball table or some sort of other amenity. Um, maybe it's, you know, couples are going to be booking this because it's a one bedroom. So maybe I'll find something that's a little bit romantic that I can throw in there and that's going to help me stand out even more, right? And it's not going to cost me that much more, but it gives me some more amenities and more pull for wanting people to stay at my place over theirs. And so as you can see, <clears throat> this corner lot, which is this one right here, is about 2,753, so about 2,800, which is that corner one that I, I really like. I think it looks really good. It's over a thousand square feet. So, um, and it's a one bedroom and it looks really good. So this is the one that I used as the example. And what I did was I put together a little uh, proof of you know how much this would make. So I'm predicting that I can make about 60,000. Now, the ones that I was looking at here down over here, the ones that I'm basing it off of are these top performers here that are actually doing 75 and 70,000. However, I'm going to say I'm going to land a little bit closer down to this range over here, right? And so if I say I'm going to make 60,000, my rent's going to be 33,000. The OPEX is going to be about 7,500. Therefore, my net profit's going to be about 18, 19,000 dollars, right? And if it costs me 7,000 dollars to get this one bedroom up and running, then it's going then in year 1 I'm going to walk away with almost 12,000 dollars and every other year after that's going to be about 19,000 dollars. And in the city of Chicago, they allow you to get about 6 of these units. I don't have a course to sell you guys. I'm just telling you um, there's about six of these units in that building that you can get, which would cost you about $42,000 to get them all up and running. And you'd make about $71,000 in that, in that first year. So, um, there's that one example. Now, what if I were to beat my competition and be that best case scenario? Well, I would actually make about $75,000, which means at the end of the day, in year one, I'd be walking away with 26, 27,000. And then <clears throat> every year after that, about 34,000. So there's a complete breakdown of how I just proved that you can analyze all the data to figure out one, where's the absolute best place to go, but then how to maximize that revenue as well. And I did that through the profit map and through using this five-step process, six-step process, if you, if you include that bonus. And it get, got me to the point where I found two listings where I could potentially be making somewhere between 20 and $30,000 of pure profit. This is in my pocket money that I could be using. So this is uh, clearly works. It's very, I love this more than anything. And I was able to do this through the profit map right? <clears throat> so if you got one second, you can hop off of you if you're done with this, but I'm just going to show you the profit map and how it works, right? The benefits of it are that you're going to get the most profitable location. You're going to be able to identify the most profitable location. I showed them with the one bedrooms. We were able to figure that out in, in, in 10 seconds. Then you're going to be able to maximize your revenue because you're going to go through this process with this data and you're going to be able to figure that out. That's what this entire video is about. But the best thing is that you're going to feel 100% confident when you sign that lease or you buy that home that you know how much profit is going to make and how to beat everybody else. And you're, you're like, I got a property that has the industrial feel and has that square footage and has all these things that's going to allow me to do better than anybody else that I'm going up against. And that's the, that's the best feeling in the world. Um, you're also going to save money and time. You're going to get it right the first time and you're going to make more money with less properties, which is best case scenario, right? <clears throat> so the, the deliverables that you get for this investment is you're going to get the profit map for whatever location that you want. You're going to get the Airbnb data masterclass that teaches you also the, the, the additional process of how to use the, the profit map, the really in-depth, not just this quick video. Then you're going to find the best neighborhood you're going to be able to go into. You're going to get 99% of that bad data removed. You're going to have the property valuation template, and then you're also going to have my property valuation process in the video to understand all that. And that is a uh, $6,844 value, which you will be getting for $499 if you buy one profit map or $749 if you buy two. And for a limited time only, I'm actually, uh, no, I'm not. <laughs> this is a 100% money back guarantee. This is at all times you get a 100% money back guarantee, okay? Um, so this is your, this is the pur purchase, this is the price. If you go down below, it says profit map. You can select that and uh, get yourself a profit map. But guys, this is it. This is everything that I just put together. That is going to teach you how to maximize your profits with a uh, Airbnb, with the Airbnb that you're going to be picking up. I hope this has been extremely helpful for you. Check out all my other videos. Like and subscribe if you actually enjoyed this. Um, I've got tons of free courses. I've got tons of more in-depth and in, 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 uh, videos like this that teach you other processes that I do. Find my YouTube, subscribe if you enjoy it, and like all the videos if you like it as well. I appreciate you guys more than you know. So enjoy and have a good day.